not to cry now since Sammy was successful. Okay. So far. So far. There's a cold tradition in medicine that it's an unaccommodating hierarchy where the doctor is installed as a superior and the patient as an inferior. Under the medical demeanor of navigating such medical appointments, the whole thing, being exclusively a patient or a doctor, sick or healthy, needing or giving, seems ridiculous and illogical. Outside the sanitized walls of the hospital, I am a, com a person complete with hopes and fears, and yet inside a hospital room, moreover on an examination table, I am a specimen of my disease, a list of medication, a compilation of surgical scars. There's a marked lack of apologies or prerequisites for doctors to perform exams, ask invading and uncomfortable questions, and inflexibly dictate treatment. The flimsy but bold idea that it's all just good business woven throughout it all. I fought against this notion of paternalistic care throughout my pediatric care, routinely clashing with my doctor, the tense encounters punctuated by his passive aggressive sighs, and sometimes me crying. I believed in the idea that doctors, patients, and parents should work together, but it was much like a wish over a birthday candle than anything I knew that existed in reality. But I kept a starry-eyed but unrealized medical vision in mind and was consistently underwhelmed and disappointed in medical care that failed to detect my soul within the diseased body as the years swept by. And then I, quite literally, stumbled upon improved care now. Admittedly, I was enchanted with the notion of such a collaborative network, but it seemed too saccharine, too futuristic, too implausible. Having been a patient advocate for several years before discovering ICN, I was used to fulfilling a token role for patients, saying token patient things, and ultimately doing token, token patient things that were very limited. But there was nothing token, ordinary, or suffocating about being a patient advocate within this network. This network is filled with filled with sincerity, generosity, creativity, curiosity, and a desperate and passionate drive to improve care right this very moment for children and families living with IBD. The insatiable appetite for research, quality improvement, and innovative collaborations was infectious. And while I can remember the extensive exhaustion after my first learning session, what I remember more is my heart racing with excitement realizing the remarkable gravity the network can have for pediatric, <coughs> pediatric IBD and in medical care in general. Then new traditions began to solidify, being asked for my opinion by established researchers and the allowance of a pause to actually absorb and respect my answer, the verbal and instrumental encouragement to actualize projects I dreamt of, being on a first name basis with clinicians I was so starry eyed around I had to force myself not to ask for autographs on their manuscripts, and having an undisputedly important place at the table in the conversation for the evolution of quality, patient-centered, collaborative care. I also have to acknowledge the wealth of community-driven tr traditions, such as suitcases packed to the broom with candy, repurposing Taylor Swift's We're Never Ever Getting Back Together, as an ode to my long last colon, as Sammy alluded to, and corralling clinicians to take pictures with Flat Jenny. The words thank you will never be enough, and I know that, and I wish I could come up with some brilliantly poetic way to aptly articulate my profound, profound, profound gratitude. I am thankful for the collective kindness of everyone in this room, the extraordinary opportunities that have been so undeservedly yet continually offered, the patience, humility, and willingness to listen to my ideas and experiences, the faith that has been loaned to allow projects to develop, and the utterly bottomless generosity afforded to me that I've been so unimaginably honored to have received. Thank you is not enough, in part because it is not in and of itself action. Instead, I will promise this. I promise to embody the spirit of ICN as I move throughout my psychology doctorate training, when I enter the field of pediatric psychology as a professional, and with every human being I encounter, be it in the hospital or on a street corner. I promise to play a role in the cultural revolution that is innovative collaborative care, to be proud and firm in constructing the values informed medical traditions of tomorrow, and help set the world on fire with a formidable and righteous idea that clinicians, patients, and parents should stand shoulder to shoulder in medical care. I have seen and felt the unparalleled power of this network. I have witnessed how kindness changes the world, and I've been so humble, fortified, and impassioned by sharing the vision of collaborative, personalized, and humanistic medicine with all of you. 
It is a cultural revolution, it is a new tradition, and it's something I'm so very, 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 very honored to have been a part of.